Hey everybody, it's Michelle Lavore and Devin Lavore coming, coming at, at you. Ya. So we have a really great video for you today, but before we start, we just wanted to address, I guess apparently our, we didn't go deep enough into researching when it came to eagles and um, yeah. we had just found something and found something on YouTube. On YouTube. Yeah. Note to self. Flash research <laughs> is not research at all. Yeah. So um, we just want to apologize for, for that and just that, um, well, well, because we were, um, some people brought up it, it, that eagles don't actually live um, 70 years and that, you know, they don't actually go through that particular process. Yeah, once we, uh, yeah, yeah, it was like we were just looking for something that matched what God was already saying to us. Yeah. So see... So then that, that eagle thing, and it's actually a work of fiction by some guy, the, the, the rebirth of an eagle. That's what yeah. it was. And we we're like, wow, this is crazy. Because not only that, but I had heard that preached before. Yeah. You know? And I think the reason it probably came up is to, to say, hey, man, you're going to be going through this process to come out of this thing to go into this yeah. thing. It's a process. It's a hard process. And everything that the thing was saying was like, yeah. That's so true. Like, oh my gosh, it has yeah. been, you know. So when we realize it's like, it's one extra biblical example <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> amidst of everything that God was saying, you yeah. know. But we just, I think we, we presented it as fact when it really wasn't. Yeah, and so yeah. we just want to apologize for that. And just like, yeah. you know, it, it's definitely something like we're definitely going to be aware of, be a, we've been made aware of. And, and never do and it never again. never do again. <laughs> so Yeah, so... That. Yeah. And, um, but so today though, we just wanted to talk about, like the title says, is it me, is it God, or is it the devil? And how do you know when you're going through something, if it, which one it is? Yeah, it's a big question. Yeah. It's a basic question. It's a question I had from the very moment I started my relationship with God at what? How old was I? 22 and a half years old. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll be 46 this Friday. Holla. <laughs> is that a celebration? Yes, it is a celebration. I'm not yeah. going to do that. Anyway, but uh, I've always wanted to know, like, well, how do I know it's the Lord? Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people believe or, or want to know that. And I think it's a, it's a constant process. Yeah. It's something that's, that's constant, you know? I don't know what uh, Ryan Lestrange and Lana Vosser's <laughs> process is. But I know Sean Bowles, he's very open with yeah. his process and how he processes things. And even he is like, it's a constant learning process. You're constantly learning because you're constantly being assaulted with the two. And God's just easing in. You know yeah. I mean? God doesn't assault you. No. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, but, and you're always presented with like new situations. So right. you, it's always, okay, is this the, you know, is God... Where is God in this um, situation that I'm being presented with? <laughs> and and so it is. It's constantly a learning process. Um, or relationships. You know, yeah. relationships can be that way as well, like we talked about yesterday. Yeah. About how you're constantly presented with new opportunities and relationships. We we try to take an opportunity for a relationship once because we felt like, wow, man, maybe, maybe this is the Lord doing this. We're going to take the opportunity. But as we began going through the process, like right from the beginning, there was like a, mm, I don't know. Yeah. That right there is the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> He's setting up. He's like, I'm going to move the first chess piece so that you know it's me. Like a lot of times Jesus would say, I'm telling you this now so that when it happens, you'd be like, wow, the Lord told me that. Yeah. You know? And, and we try to, but as we went through the process, we realized that. The opportunity and relationship and ministry connection, it just was not the Lord. Yeah. And the further you go down the road, the more you're going to realize whether it's the Lord or not. Yeah. You know? And there are times when you do have to kind of take those steps um, where it's like, okay, okay, that definitely wasn't the Lord. Yeah. Um, and then there are other times where it is very clear that this is not the Lord and don't even don't take even, a step. Don't in that even direction. take a step. Yeah, that <laughs> yeah. door is closed yeah. and <laughs> don't try and open it. Yeah. And um yeah. And but how do we know? Yeah. You know? How, how do, do you know? how do we know? Well I feel like a lot of it are I just think that when it comes to knowing whether something is the Lord or not, you really have to know the Lord. 
you really just have to continue to know who he is, mm -hmm. how he, he, he wants things to be. Because the more you know him, the easier it will be to identify things that are not him. Right. You know, it's, it's just like, you know, if you study a banana, it's really easy to know when something is not a banana. Because mm -hmm. it's, it's in your mind, you know, okay, well, this is what a banana looks like. So if you're out in the forest and you see something that looks similar to it. Like a plantain. Like a plantain, but you know. Is a plantain a banana? I don't know, but you know it's not a banana. <laughs> yeah. So it's like you'll be able to distinguish even when things look very similar, mm -hmm. you know. And so it's just, I think that when you know God, and why would things look similar? Well, that's because that's what the enemy does. He tries to make something look really good and very similar to mm -hmm. God. I mean, even with the test with Jesus, yep. he was using scripture. He was saying, well, but the Lord said this. You know, mm -hmm. he says, God said that, you know, your foot won't strike the ground. And and Jesus comes back with scripture in in the proper form that mm -hmm. God intended it to be. It's like, well, I'm not going to test him. Yeah. <laughs> and so... He's not telling me to jump, so I'm not going to jump. I'm not going to... Let me jump and see if he catches me because I end up dead or with broken legs. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so it's very important to know the Lord. Mm -hmm. Just continually growing in, wow, this is what God wants. This is how he wants things to be done. Well, there's and there's a scripture. Um, hold on. Had to go get the Bible. Got to give you some Bible in this Bible teaching, you know. <laughs> and I'm uh, reading from James chapter 3, uh, verses, where am I going to start? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with uh, verse 13. It says, Who is there among you who is wise and intelligent? Then let him by his noble living show forth his good fruits with the unobtrusive humility which is the proper attitude of true wisdom. So first of all, wisdom from God is humble. Jesus said, come to me. I'm humble. You know, I'm humble at heart. I'm not, I'm not going to be advertising myself. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Jesus himself does not advertise himself. That right there is a video. But anyway, <laughs> but if you have bitter jealousy, envy, and contention, rivalry, selfish ambition in your hearts, do not pride yourselves on it and thus be in defiance of and false to the truth. This superficial wisdom is not such as comes down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, animal, even devilish. Uh, for, whatever, for wherever there is jealousy, envy, and contention, rivalry, and selfish ambition, there will also be confusion. That's a huge one. We need to touch on that. Mm -hmm. Unrest, disharmony, rebellion, and all sorts of evil and vile practices. But, one of my kids' favorite words, <laughs> but <laughs> the wisdom from above is first of all pure. It's undefiled. Then it is, a, then it is peace loving, courteous, considerate, gentle. It is willing to yield to reason. Wisdom is willing to yield to reason. Look at, uh, what is it, uh, Isaiah one eighteen, I believe. God says, come, let's reason together. Mm -hmm. He's like, come on, let, let's sit down and talk about this so I can really help you to see it my way. That's yes. basically what he's doing because God is wisdom. Yeah. Jesus is the wisdom from God, right? Mm -hmm. He's like, come on, let's talk about it. You know, and in 1 Corinthians 13, it also says that. Yeah. It yields. It's like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'm willing to listen to you. Man, I need to work on that. Because when I know where my kids are going and what they're saying, I just cut them off. I'm like, no, that's not how it's going to be. This is how it's going to be. Maybe we'll address that in our parent video tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> but it says, it is willing to yield to reason, full of compassion and good fruits. It is wholehearted and straightforward. It's telling you the truth. It's not going to sugarcoat it or politicize it. It's just going to tell you straightforward. Impartial and unfeigned, meaning free from doubts wavering and insincerity 
So it's like right there, if you need something, some sort of scripture to be like, okay, let me just have some sort of scriptural guideline. Mm -hmm. You know, James chapter 3, verse 17 tells you what the wisdom from God is. What, what, um, because a lot of times we can get into our head. Mm -hmm. See, that's where the me part comes in. Yeah. And we're trying to figure the Lord out like the Galatians did. They're trying to walk out the spirit life by using their heads and using the law. And Paul was like, you're not thinking. You're being witless. You're not being thoughtful. You're not really giving this the proper consideration mm -hmm. that your mind, you think in your mind you're giving it. You're really mm -hmm. not. Because you can't walk out in the flesh what was birthed in the spirit. Mm -hmm. It's like if it's God doing it, He's going to be doing it. He's going to begin it and he's going to finish it. Mm -hmm. You know, and a lot of times we get into our heads and we think, oh, that's wisdom. Because, you know, uh, Dave Ramsey and Zig Ziglar and uh, all these people who have relationships with God, who have imparted their knowledge to the world, but we're taking all of it and we're figuring it out on our own and we're doing it on our own. Mm -hmm. You see? Because we'll do the same thing with the scripture. Well, the scripture says, the scripture says, the scripture says. Well, what did... Look at Job's friends. The most referenced book in all the Bible is Job. Be is because all of his friends were quoting scripture. They were quoting biblical principles. They were quoting the principles of God. And well, God, you know, this must be because they were. But what you find with those three is they were all using their head mm -hmm. to try to figure out what was going on with Job. And yeah. then what did the Lord say at the very end? He said, who is this? that darkens this situation with counsel that is not from me. That's mm -hmm. not wisdom, basically. It's mm -hmm. like, you're not speaking wisdom. Why? Because you have not prayed about Job's situation, and you have not heard from me about Job's situation. Therefore, you have zero authority to speak into Job's situation. My Lord in heaven, if the church operated under that principle, there would be a lot less social media interactivity regarding opinions of this, that, and the other thing. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times people are just spouting their opinion and mm -hmm. they don't know what they're talking about. They have not prayed one hour father regarding your situation, but they want to speak into your life. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you can't do that. You cannot use your head mm -hmm. to figure out what God is saying. You just have to talk to him and hear from him. You yeah. Know? And so um, we did want to just kind of give... Um, some examples or just one really particular mm -hmm. example of just when when the enemy does attack and recognizing oh, when he this does. This is an amazing example <laughs> because it's really the same thing yeah. being used by two different sources. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. This is going to be awesome. I hope you guys like it. <laughs> yeah. So um, last night for me, it was, um, I ended up being attacked. Um, I didn't realize it at first. And this is, and it's so Cause interesting. Because it was crafty and cunning. It's, the yeah. it kind of slithered in. Yeah. <laughs> so it started off just with me starting to feel down. And, um, and, and I was just, you know, it, it was familiar to me. And I think that's why I didn't recognize it at first because it's um i've dealt with depression a lot during my life and i was hoping for you to have the default response yeah. that you normally have yeah yeah and um so it was just like that okay you used i just to normally have yeah there we no go. longer little, um, little slip ups <laughs> here and there <laughs> and it was just like i just started feeling down for really no reason there was not any particular thing attached to it it was just like yeah, there's kind of this, I don't know, this weighty, there was like a weightiness to that feeling. And so we just kind of kept going through our night and, and stuff. And um, and some things were just harder than what we expected. We were trying to figure some logistical things out. And mm -hmm. it wasn't really working the way that we were hoping that it would work. And, you keep going. Um, and so I was just like, all right, you know. I started to feel kind of, I started to actually feel frustrated and irritated, which again was something that I'm like, well, maybe I just haven't like gotten enough to eat because that has, can happen to me. And you did have me. a rough night of sleep. And I had a rough night of sleep. Or a so rough night of lack of sleep. <laughs> it was, you know, it was kind of like, all right, well, it's near the end of the night. Um, 
I, I don't know, it could be these other factors. But it's like, man, it just there's just this irritation. And then we were talking about some things and it was just like We're talking about what was God what, saying. What was to God us. saying to and us? That was a big trigger. And and it was like there was this almost as much as I didn't want it to be like an accusatory thing, it was kind of coming out that way. And I'm just like... Yeah, and I felt yeah. it right away. Yeah. And as soon as the way she said a certain thing right away, I was like, ooh. I could feel the spirit of it. Yeah. I was like, or God was just giving me that knowledge mm -hmm. of like, whoa, this is not just normal conversation here. Yeah. And, <laughs> and by then, that was when I was kind of like, you were like oh... oh. Mm. What's going maybe on? maybe this isn't just me. Yeah. <laughs> this could be like an attack. And it just kind of kind of just sat there for a while. Mm -hmm. And in my head I'm like, okay, I really do think this is an attack, but there was this part of me that was just like, man, that means I have to like rebuke the enemy. And I struggled with it. I you know, it was just this like struggle of come on just just I go like and uh rebuke and and there's a party that was just like I don't want to yeah because here's another thing <laughs> when I'm when I'm getting attacked a lot of times I start to feel really really tired mm -hmm. and it is this like it's almost like kind of like a, a blanket mm -hmm. and you feel like squeezed almost and it was just like, I'm so exhausted. It's the venom. I'm so tired. The snake, in, it injects you with the venom first, so it's just easy to subdue you. Yeah. You know? And so I'm just like, I'm in, in the car, we're driving back, and I'm just like, I'm exhausted. I don't want to talk about this stuff. I just... I don't even believe it. I just want to... I want to preserve myself. <laughs> yeah, <I'm just laughs> That's like, what you were doing. Yeah, and it was just like, oh my gosh, this is just too much. And, but, but God was speaking. He was just like, come on. Like, he's just like encouraging me to just come on, like, just, just rebuke this thing. Mm -hmm. And so finally I was just like, I'm serious. It wasn't like I was like, and in the name of Jesus, it was just like, it was like, it was the very opposite of, <laughs> I, I actually laughed. <laughs> Like, well, in the name of Jesus, enemy, leave me alone. <laughs> like, literally. No, like, no, oh, no. you do let, it. Let, let me. You were, <laughs> you were just like, I mean, you were in the mully grubs instantly. And I was just like, what is going on? Our conversation really sent you down yeah. like several levels. And you were like, well, just, enemy, just leave me alone. I did say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, leave me alone. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I was I was like, I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> I was like, do you, do you feel any different, any better? And you just sat there and you're like, <sighs> and I was and, like, and uh, it took me a little while, and I was worked. like, I was like, I, 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 I did say I was like a little bit, but that's true. You did. You're like, oh, but then bit. like, like, like thirty seconds later, yeah, you were answering a question from thirty seconds ago, <laughs> which really isn't all that much time. Could Not be thirty for you. minutes. Not for you. <laughs> And so, oh. but we kept, I would say within really not that much longer. Couple minutes. Couple minutes. Yeah. I was just like, all of a sudden I could just feel like I could breathe. And it was an actual little, like physical, <clears throat> like, I was just like, oh, like I can breathe. And I just, it was then, it was very clear, like that was the attack of the enemy. And it was just like. Wow, that is how he pretty much has gotten me every single time. I mean, it's mm -hmm. just like, there's literally like, I could just follow the steps of like, okay, the very first thing you're going to feel is you're going to start to feel depressed. You're hopeless, kind of just this down feeling. And then it's like demonic, it's like demonic <laughs> anesthesia. Yeah. No, just count and, backwards. Five, four, three, you know? Yeah, really. <laughs> and and then it, there's an irritation that always comes with it. There is an mm -hmm. extreme tiredness that always comes with it. And mm -hmm. it's different than a tired, like... I lost sleep I'm, or I'm, I'm lost hungry. Yeah. yeah. I know that, you know, it's like I know the difference. Well, there's sense. one that's very natural and one that's like supernatural. Yeah. And if you study the root word, just the word super, it means above and beyond and like... This is crazy. 
Yeah. You know, like Superman. He's yeah. like, he's a man, but he's just above and beyond the normal man. Yeah. You know? So it's and like above and beyond the normal be tiredness. Normal. So it's a supernatural rest in a yeah. negative sense. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and then it's like, there's usually, it's, there's a lot of confusion and mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. anger can come out of that Brain and frustration. Fog. And, and, yeah. and it's like, you don't know, it's like almost like you're just like, where is the Lord in this? Like, what is going on? It makes it very difficult to hear the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that God was with me trying to, like, hey, you just, all you have to do is speak. And that is another thing for me personally. Mm -hmm. When it comes to speaking out. In the midst of. In the midst of, yeah. of an attack, it's very, very difficult. And it's almost like the enemy is trying, he really is trying to silence your mouth. Why? Yeah. Because he knows that when you speak the truth, it's, he has to obey. You know, he knows. Like, I mean, just that little, well, in the name of Jesus, leave me alone. It was like, Shot oh, him. I have to, I have to leave her alone. Yeah. You know, you, they have to listen to the voice of the Lord. Yeah. And it was just like. All right. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, it's like when you're playing a video game and you you know you, you pull out that weapon, that weapon that just like that destroys all the enemy on the uh, all the enemies on the board in that one moment. You know, mm -hmm. you hit the you hit the super button, poof, all the enemies just go poof. Yeah. <laughs> it's like all right, I got some breathing room here because yeah. I was getting my butt kicked. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that was kind of again like when in during during that time when God was just like. I need you you have to do you have to say something mm. it was um it's so important I, again i saw that the like the the picture was like you're just allowing the enemy to just come in and beat you up yeah you're not doing anything and Which you is have actually the a common authority. pattern it is a common, so pattern. a common pattern and but even in the scripture it says hey come lay down so that we might walk across your back yeah. Meaning, so it's a common human experience yeah. for people when they uh, are getting attacked or the enemy comes to just let it happen. Yeah. You know, it's not well, just a... And I think it, in a lot of ways when it comes to the enemy, uh, it, it's very much like the frog in the pot, you know. Right. It's like it just starts to heat up. And, and you don't, you, you kind of get used to it as it goes along and you're not until you're literally in like yeah. a dire situation you're about to die and it's like oh my gosh like this is not good <laughs> like how did mm -hmm. i get here yeah. and so it, it's it says that the, the enemy is very subtle and crafty mm -hmm. you know he's not going to just come in you know like hey guys i'm here i'm here to I'm here to <laughs> deceive you and confuse you and steal and kill and destroy come sign up today yeah yeah it's, it's, it's like, not that not way that. but we can start to recognize it and i think mm -hmm. that for me it was just a huge it, really a huge breakthrough because usually that that particular sequence i could be it could take me down and it has before yeah and um, for weeks and weeks and weeks. I mean, it's really just what I went through until, um, like... Well, it's a familiar spirit. Yeah. It's a familiar spirit, meaning familiar spirits are spirits that attach themselves to families. Mm -hmm. And whoever's going to be, whoever's going to, you know, it, it, that's why you can have familiar spirits and you can have generational blessings. Like with me and Michelle, we are establishing generational blessings mm -hmm. in our family. We don't because a lot of times you see something happening or you see something going on in your family, and it's definitely not right. It's super not right, but you just let it. You just don't deal with it, or you try to go to a psychologist or something like that. Or you, yeah, to yeah, deal oh, with or it, you just or, don't know how. Or you don't know how, and you feel paralyzed by just not even knowing how to deal with it. But it's like, for us, we have been trying to like. We, we're dealing with stuff because mm -hmm. based on a whole bunch of stuff that God's shown us about how we're the first of our kind and all that stuff and mm -hmm. from our family line yeah you know and so now that I've taken the reins no I was kidding I asked her just before that little edit blip there <laughs> if I could talk but um but it was interesting while M Michelle was going through her thing I knew it was the enemy Mm -hmm. I knew right away because I could tell right from when she spoke and, and she was like well I don't know if that's the Lord and da -da. And it reminded me of the very thing she had just come out of mm -hmm. the six weeks. I was like, 
the enemy is trying to steal her breakthrough right here, right yeah. now. Yeah. And it's like, no, I'm not going to let that happen. And the Lord was like, sit down, buddy. <laughs> of course, I was driving, so sitting down wasn't a problem. Yeah. But, <laughs> but in my spirit, he was just like, mm -mm, nope. And I was like, I mean, because if you know me at all, I mean, if you actually knew me, when, when the enemy comes on the scene, I am not a flight guy. No. If it's if it's if it's fight or flight, I'm fighting every time. Sometimes to my own detriment. Yeah. You know. Well, in the past, I don't. I wouldn't say that that's the way it is now. But I'll get up and fight in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, you're not going to come in here and do. Uh, and you know, I've had to come and champion a lot of things. That's what Jesus did. He came and he championed the freedom for everybody. He came to undo the works mm -hmm. of the enemy. But the Lord was like, you can't do this one. And it was driving me crazy. Could you tell? I mean, yeah. I was going nuts, just not saying anything or doing anything. Because I knew what to do. And I was, I mean, I was ready to pull my sword out and start hacking. So, ugh, I was ready. And the Lord was like, you can't. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, it was really hard. I can't even, I'm not even going to go into it. Because I'm overemphasizing and I really can't overemphasize enough how difficult it was for me to just shut up. You're like, some of you are like, oh, we know. <laughs> We've been watching the videos. We know how hard it is for you to not talk. <laughs> but it was hard for me. And so, and I was like, okay. Because I felt like the Lord was like, she has to do it. Mm -hmm. It was like, if she's going to maintain the breakthrough, she has to do it. Yeah. It's like, you can't maintain Michelle's breakthrough. As much as you love her and yeah. all that, you can't do it. Yeah. Because then that's how it's going to have to be maintained. Yeah. It's like, no, that's that. God's like, that is not my will. Yeah. That's not what I want to see happen. Now, everything I'm saying to you right now is not what the Lord was saying to me in the van. That's just the impression I got. Like Sean Bowles talks about translating God. Mm -hmm. I'm just translating to you what I was getting in the spirit, not in words. Yeah. It was just the Holy Spirit was just, I was just getting, I just knew. There was, yeah. just a, there was just a knowing that, like, this is what God is saying, even though he mm -hmm. wasn't speaking like we're speaking to you right now. Yeah. You know, but it was God speaking. It was God communicating. And so and so she did her thing. I cracked up about it. I was like, okay, you, you, are you good? Mm -hmm. Are you? And then, it, and then it went on, right? <clears throat> and then later that night, but, but the thing that really made me mad is because it reminded me of that time in Kansas City where she was really, really just, it was unusually, all the symptoms, yeah. tired and irritated and depressed and I don't know what the purpose of life is mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And, and I'm just like, all right, I'm used to this by now, but I could tell there was definitely a demonic presence mm -hmm. in the room and I didn't like it because yeah. I feel like, I'm like, Lord, what? are we doing wrong? What open doors and all that stuff? Because, you know, you hear, you read books about opening the door to the enemy and what what's in your house? That Do you have a clean house? You need to cleanse house so that you don't have little little trinkets or whatever that open the door to the enemy. We don't have any of that stuff. And I, God took me through all that kind of stuff before. And I'm just like, I'm like, Lord, why does this keep happening? Like, what? there's got to be an open door. Because there's been some stuff we've been through as a family yeah. that's like, how can this possibly be happening? Mm -hmm. The enemy operating in my family like this, I'm really, really angry about it. Like, like a, maybe, a, like, like Lana Vosser was like a holy dissatisfaction. I'm greatly dissatisfied by the fact that the enemy, he just, he just can just come in anytime he wants and just do this? Like, no, Lord, this that cannot be your will. And so fueled by that, because I remember during that time in Kansas City, I saw this massive snake yeah. wrapped around Michelle's body and I was just like I don't remember even remember what happened during that time but I mean we dealt well, with well, it well yeah like, I finally I just gotta like I, I think I ended up just rebuking yeah and well because I remember the Lord just kind of came on me to yeah. show me yeah and I was like and he was like you need to tell her this yeah and I did not want to because I was like oh this is going to become really supernatural weird you yeah. know but I was like I had to do it I was yeah. like, look at that and thing. It, and again, I mean, I, though, it I was... I saw it very clearly. It, it was, was wicked you, looking. You told me, and then I, and then I you, was you woke the one up. You that like, was just yeah. like, all right, well, <laughs> yeah. in the name of Jesus, get out of here. Yeah. And then that's when you just said, it's just yeah. like... It like shriveled up like one of those like clown balloon things. It just it shriveled up, and then it just... 
took off. Yeah. It slithered off faster than any big snake could ever possibly slither because mm -hmm. big snakes can't slither fast. And um, so I, I just had the sense that that's exactly what was going on here. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was so upset. And, and then recently, things that have been coming up in my um, recommended videos, I've never looked at this stuff before, never had a need to, but it kept coming up. Leviathan, python, Leviathan, python, and all these big wig, uh, you know, YouTubers and prophetic voices and ministers and stuff were preaching on it and teaching on it. And I'm like, why am I getting all this stuff? Mm -hmm. Well, now I know. <laughs> and I was just like, you know what, I am going to go and I'm going to like, you know, research this stuff, you know. And the Lord knows how much I love research. That's sarcasm, folks. <laughs> I can't stand research. He gave me a queen researcher right here. And so, but I started looking it up. And the first thing I do when I do my research is with everything, even with prayer and the word, I just go straight to the word. If I have a question, I go right to God. I go right to the Bible. I want to know what the Bible says about it first before I read someone's book or something like that. You know, that's why a lot of the books that I'm going to come out with are going to probably, they might have more word in it than it, yeah. <laughs> in my opinion. Because this is, I just want, I want people to know the word. I mm -hmm. want you guys to know the word. If you know the word, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. I'm not trying to build my own little kingdom or something. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what good is that going to do? And so I started researching, and I knew that based on some of the, th the few little minutes of the videos that I had watched, I knew that the Python spirit was a spirit of divination. Because I knew you're not going to type in the word Python, and it's just going to pop up. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, so I typed in divination. It comes from the Greek word Python. And at just, I mean, as soon as I clicked on the uh, strong concordance thing, boom, this thing hit me. And it was intense. It was extremely intense. Like, I had not felt that level of intensity in a long time. Immediate brain fog. Immediate. Now, this is interesting. There was an immediate sense of guilt and shame that came with this, this thing that I was being hit by. Eli, you got to be quiet, buddy. <clears throat> and there was a confusion and an anxiety and the brain fog was massive. I mean, <laughs> and I just was like, lots of fear. And I was scrambling to try to, I just felt like this sense of like, oh my gosh, I've done something wrong. I need to try and figure out what I need to do to get myself right with God. <laughs> and <laughs> that's what it felt like. And, but with it came a sense of like deep tiredness. But also there was like a, I tell you what, there was like a heaviness on my chest, mm -hmm. and I, I had a hard time breathing. And I remember Kay Nash talking about that, because I think out of all the Python videos I've watched, which is like two, <laughs> hers was the one I watched the most of. I didn't watch the whole thing, but I watched most of it, and I was like, ooh, this is good information. I'm going to have to get to it later. And you know, the stuff you say I'm going to get to it later, you never get to it. But I was like, I'm going to have to get to this now because it's in my face. And But I remember her saying, like, there, there's like a shortness of breath and you, you have a hard time breathing. And I was like, oh, my gosh. I was like, I am being attacked by it. I'm being attacked by it now? I was like, okay, you left Michelle. Now you're going to jump on me? I was like, I was ready to throw down. <laughs> but but I just, now the, now here's where the interesting part comes in. Because she was being attacked by the enemy, right? Mm -hmm. Me, I felt like the Lord was saying, no, no, no. You know? <laughs> Just this sense of like, hold on, hold on. I'm like, what you mean, hold on? This is not feeling good right now. <laughs> I don't want that. I'm not going to sit under this. No, I'm not. But I just, I just, there's this movie called The Bodyguard where Kevin Costner is a bodyguard for Whitney Houston's character. <clears throat> And there's this person that's out to kill uh, Whitney Houston's character. And toward the end of the movie, he finally catches up with her. And Kevin Costner's in this big battle with him. And there's all this craziness going on. And then the killer runs out the back door. And then Kevin Costner runs out the back door. And he's like, wait a minute. And in himself, he knows just, it's too crazy right now. It's too nutso right now. And what he does is he takes a knee in the snow. And he just listens. Because there's so much going on in his head and in his body and the blood rushing in his, even in his ears. He, from his training, 
he knew I'm just going to take a knee. And then right then he was able to hear where, because, you know, where that guy was running. Because he knew, like, man, so much going on. I could end up running the wrong direction. I, th I think I hear him running over this way, but he's actually not running over that way. He's all the way over there. So he took a knee and he got completely silent. That's exactly what I did. And I've learned to do that in every kind of really intense attack type of situation. Because what am I doing? I'm taking a knee in my heart to listen to the Lord. Because I'm like, I don't care what's going on around me and how evil it feels. Because it was evil. I'm going to listen to the Lord. Because the Bible says, submit to God. Then resist the devil. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't say, jump up and resist the devil. Ah, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of charismatic, supernatural, everything's about intercession and attacking the enemy. Ah, it's funny. The, their whole lives become about the enemy. Yeah. And it's like the enemy's going, ha, ha I got you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Came around the back door on that one. You yeah. know, and it's like, now, anyway, came out of a church that was really very much like that. And um, so I'm listening to the Lord, and I have to tell you, and, and you can confirm it, it was the Lord. Mm -hmm. The Lord was doing this. Because the Lord's like, this is why. Let me tell you why. The Lord's like, Devin, you, you are not a researcher. Let me just give you an immersion experience. Bam. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, oh my gosh. I mean, I felt, I felt like I was going to hell. I did. I felt unsaved. Like I was on my way to hell. I did something wrong. This is terrible. And what can I do to save myself? Knelt down at the bed and prayed. Remember that? I, and I was like, oh God, what are you saying? What are you saying? And put on some worship. That was a, like my prayer was not working. Mm -hmm. It was not getting rid of the thing. Worship was just like it was. There was almost like a resistance to the worship. It was almost like this is worthless. Like mm -hmm. that's not gonna do nothing. Now see all those kind of things like prayer isn't gonna work. Worship's pointless. That's the enemy. Mm -hmm. You know. But in this particular sense, it it wasn't necessarily the enemy. I mean, the enemy could have been there. And that could have been the enemy in and of itself, but it was the Lord doing it. So our battery pack was dying. <laughs> and so we had to plug it in. But like I was saying before, like I'm really quick to ask for help. So I asked Michelle, you got to pray for me. And even as I asked the Michelle to pray for me, I could feel the Lord going, no, that's not, yeah. that's not it. And it was, and it was interesting because I, I was praying and I just, it was almost like this sense of, okay, I don't, I don't know. It was because just, this has happened to us one yeah, other this time is before. One, one other time before. And <clears throat> so I just prayed, you know, I was like, well, Lord, you know, just put peace on Devin. I don't know what's going on. And, and then, like, and then afterwards, that's I just asked him, I was just <laughs> like, what is it that you're going through? Like, basically, what is it that you're really what's going on? feeling? What's really going on? Mm -hmm. And it was just like, hey, like, this really could be God giving you basically a word of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And like we said, we've actually experienced that before where... And as soon as, the, even the last time, as soon yeah. as she was like, I think this is a word of knowledge, it was like, boom, boom. it left. Yeah. And that was God saying, ta-da. And I'm going, that's not funny. <laughs> that was not cool, bro. Yeah. But it's like, God... We'll do that because it was a it was a it was a kind of a wicked experience that time too. Yeah, it was. It was like you need to understand, like oh, because I think we made a video about mm -hmm. it about like the comparison mm -hmm. and the selfish ambition and all that stuff. I'm like, what is going on? I don't understand. Why am I being assaulted by this? Yeah, this is not me. Yeah. So. Yeah, so it's just yeah. like, so in in that case, it was very much like, okay, wow, like God was giving Devin a word of knowledge experience of what I had gone through in an actual, like the mm -hmm. actual attack. And, and like that you said. That covered any amount of research I could have ever done. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I was like, wow. Cause God is big on experience. He doesn't want you to just, Oh, you're merciful. God gracious. And saying all these words. And he's going, do you, do you really know the experience of mm -hmm. me being like that to you? No, nope, not really. Yeah. And that's a lot of Christian experience, honestly. Mm -hmm. You're a Christian, you got saved, you got your ticket punched, but you really don't know the Lord. Yeah. You don't really know him. And I feel like the Lord is saying that is exactly the exact 
revival and outpouring yes. of my spirit that's coming yes. is going to do that. Yes. It's going to be a John 17, 3 outpouring of the knowledge of the Lord, not the head knowledge of the Lord, but the, but the experiencing of experiencing him as your deliverer, experiencing him as your great reward, experiencing him as your savior, the mighty one, the righteous one, the just one, experiencing that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so... Yeah, and I agree, and, and really I do. I think he's God is taking us through all these things because he wants us to know him. And when we know him, mm -hmm. we will recognize when things are not of the Lord. And and that's really just the, like, I think the best way mm -hmm. to know if, if this is the Lord or not. Um, am I being attacked or not? Because if it's coming against the character and who God is, then you know that it's not from him. And things that he's clearly, clearly told you and demonstrated mm -hmm. and given you. I mean, being here in Nashville, we've been attacked about being here in Nashville a couple of times. Yeah. Just being here. And it's like, but it's clear that God brought us here. It's like, oh, yeah, well, why are things happening the way that that kind of stuff? Yeah. You know, and a lot of times the enemy he will come to you and he'll put first person thoughts in your head to make you think you're mm -hmm. thinking it. And yeah. it's really not you at all, it's the enemy. Yeah. You know, and so after after we uh, realized, oh, this is a word of knowledge, it slowly began to lift and the Lord was like and and as the things were lifting, there was a processing between me and the Lord. So as the thing was was lifting, as God was finishing up doing what he was doing, we weren't quite finished because it was slowly lifting, as I was saying. But in that transition time between going back to, oh, I can breathe and normal, God was letting me feel and letting me letting me process what had just happened to me. And he was just sharing. Again, it was that sharing of hearts. Like when you're in a really deep relationship with someone and you know what they're thinking without them having to say, say anything. There was just a sense of like the Lord was like, there are a lot of people out there like that suffering from this. Mm -hmm. That's why they don't fulfill their destiny. That's why they don't walk in the dream that I have for them. That's why they don't walk in my will, even though they're Christians and they go to church and they really want to, mm -hmm. because they don't recognize this spirit. Yeah. They don't recognize when the enemy's attacking them. And then when the enemy does attack them, they just kind of let it happen. Mm -hmm. And I, I experienced a level of I mean, I, like I've already said in the video, I'm a fighter and I get really riled up. I experienced that on a level I've never experienced it before. Because it wasn't just, oh, come on, I'm ready to fight. It wasn't that. It was that, but like, I don't know how to explain it. Like a hundred times more. And what was the result of that? I was very like calm about it. I was very like quiet and peaceful about it. But like there was a sense of rage inside of me. I don't know how to explain it. It's going to sound weird. But there was a sense of rage and intensity in me that was very calm and peaceful. And I was ready to destroy. I mean, I was ready to destroy. I was mad. You know, because we, we, we ask, oh, God, give me your heart for people. And you don't expect it to be that kind of experience. Mm -hmm. You expect God to fill you with lovey-dovey flowers mm -hmm. or something like that. It's like, oh, you want my heart for people? Okay, here, you experience what they go through. Oh, I don't want... No, 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 no. Can I have the uh, happy package, please? Mm -hmm. With a little side of uh, love, peace, and joy? No, you don't expect something yeah. like this to happen. in order Because that's what was going on in that process from the intensity of it. And I was coming out of it. I was kind of decompressing. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, coming up for air. And the Lord was like... You need to under, that's what people are going through. That is what I'm dealing with in people. That's what I'm dealing with in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. I'm dealing with that. And it's just like, and I just felt like it was an important impartation for me because God gave me that dream about those snakes in that prison that ate that two-year-old boy. You know, <laughs> he wasn't even two years old yet. You know, and it's just, so God does stuff like that with me because I'm open to it and I really want to know his heart. Mm -hmm. And sometimes God will do scary things like that, but it's the Lord. Yeah. Whereas with Michelle, it was just straight the enemy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, 
And of course, that I mean, I, I'm not exempting myself. A lot of times the enemy would hit me with depression or something like that. It happened to me just this morning. Mm -hmm. You know, I got up and man, I just felt so low, felt so down. I felt like, man, God, you're not coming through for us. Lord, we're, we're, we're in a situation that, you know, you're declaring your situation to the Lord. And, and it's like you're, you wake up with this sense of anxiety and fear. And, and it's like, that's the enemy. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's just like. Well, and, it, and that's also, though, where it could really be yourself. Mm -hmm. It can be because we all have these default settings mm -hmm. that we go to. They're, you know what? You're right. They're really but just. But the enemy sees it and he's and like, he, ooh, he he'll start, jump on it. He can start using that as an That's where it can be confusing. Yeah. And I think there are times when it, it really is, it's, it's like you're in a habit or you're, you get triggered. You know, everybody has different points that might trigger them and might trigger, you know, you might, something in a situation might happen and you, your response is, I get angry. Your mm -hmm. response is, I'm, it makes me really sad or I retreat. Sure, sure. So we all have those. And um, the enemy's constantly trying to trigger those. Yeah. You know, but if you if you wake up like it, he's like, oh, I don't have to do anything. Yeah. I can just come alongside and agree with you. So I think, <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. And That's so really I right. think that, you know, that is where it talks about the whole... God is always talking about renewing your mind mm -hmm. because and that's not that, just a New Testament concept. No, and and that <laughs> is that's when it has to do with you. Mm -hmm. When it is like, wow, that that's that's me. I tend to do this thing, this particular behavior, because a lot of the renewing mind is is behavior patterns that don't produce the fruit of the spirit that God wants to have living in you. Mm -hmm. It's it's producing the opposite of that, you know? And and so it's like if you do wake up in the morning and it's like, man, I already feel just down and and maybe there's some sort of trigger. I mean, for some people like myself, like it can be cloudy outside mm -hmm. and that can be a trigger point because it's it can be this like man it's your cloudy. depression's already been yeah. always been related to, to cloudy cloud, outside yeah it's yeah. cloudy outside it's depressing like oh it looks dull and so then you can walk through your day feeling that all day and you don't actually have to you know but it's noticing those trigger points within yourself and going to God and and having Him renew your mind and I think that really ultimately with all of this is it. Is it God? Is it me? Or is it the devil? It's go to God. Yeah, because we can. The enemy can get you tripped up trying to figure out which three it is. Yeah, you don't. You the don't Lord even have to figure that. it out. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, you don't have to figure that out. Just listen. Is it me? No. Well, then reject it. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, exactly. It's not James three. You know, three seventeen. This is what it looks like when it's from me. I'm gonna be straightforward with you. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna. It's gonna come with peace. Yeah. There's going to be a peace on it. There's going to be a joy on it. There's going to be hope on it. There's going to be encouragement and consolation and comfort on it. There's going to be love on it. Mm -hmm. There's going to be encouragement for you to believe. And yeah, yeah. That's, that's going to be on it. You know, even in a crazy experience like I had before, that actually built me up. Yeah. It lifted me up. It was like, wow, I, I, I know more of the Lord now. I would absolutely go through that again. Mm -hmm. Not that I want to, yeah. <laughs> but I would if it meant getting to know the Lord better. Because I knew right in the midst of it, just like you did, he was with me during this crazy yeah. experience. Mm -hmm. And I knew it was the Lord taking me through something. I was like, man, I really don't like... I told him, I was like, I really did not like that. It was not cool. But, you know, if, you, if, it's, if it's from you, we're good. But it's like, yeah, if it's not the Lord then that's all you really need to know. Yeah. You know, and it's like the, the scripture says, again, Jesus says, my sheep know my voice. Yeah. You know, and you don't have to listen to the voice of a stranger and follow fear and follow anxiety and all that stuff. You just have to listen to the Lord, know the Lord, and it is a process. Yeah. You got to know it's a process. Sometimes you're going to get it wrong, you know, but yeah, I think we've said enough. I think so. <laughs> A, it's a heavy pro, uh, uh, a heavy topic. Yeah. So didn't expect it to go this long, but we do hope it. that you guys have it was gotten worth the trip. It was, <laughs> that you have gotten um, some some things out of this. Um, yeah. And that God has spoken to your heart, and that you guys are blessed. So mm -hmm. um, until next time, we will see you guys later.
Bye-bye, guys. Bye.